Good morning, folks. We've had our first X-Class solar flare of the sunspot cycle. And as if that's not exciting enough, it allows us to discuss an umbrella paradigm for the cycle. We also have a bit of other cool news, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours on our star with the major activity at the northwestern departing limb. The Earth-facing sunspots have remained silent, and the coronal holes keep turning in. But a flurry of solar flares can be seen here on the X-ray flux chart. Peak 1 did hit X-class. But it didn't come from those Earth-facing active regions, as we mentioned. It came from one that frankly came out of nowhere. Wasn't born until it was nearly out of sight already. But the X-ray production has been fantastic. And at such a high latitude, I think we can say the magnetic terminator event has occurred, and the sun is about to gear up. You can see here on SOHO, all of these eruptions are going to the right, 90 degrees away from Earth, about three months ahead in our orbital circle. More on the sun in just a minute, but first, let's check out the double six-pointers off the coast of Chile. We do expect an earthquake watch to peak for high magnitude Monday or Tuesday. Learn more about why with the solar uptick at quakewatch.net. Two quick shots for Mars here. First, as if Mars moons aren't interesting enough with things like the Phobos monolith, the moons may be leftovers from one of Ares' former battles. Very interesting paper there. It's also showing off more of its ice features. Signature of clays and water mixed together. Marcy radar reflection in on that one. This piece of shilbait in nature is not worth reading. I just was hoping to light them up for a moment, if I may. How ironic that climate litigants complain on lack of evidence and the need to include everything the modern science has to offer. Pot spitting racial slurs at the kettle there as they ignore almost half the climate story so it fits their narrative. Maybe if they wanted to fully appreciate it, they wouldn't ignore over a thousand peer-reviewed papers on how much bias or oversensitivity or uncertainty exists in their models. Or how if the poles keep melting, it triggers cold. Or how the solar particles and interplanetary magnetic fields and cosmic rays actually work the climate to an incredible degree. Nature, the alleged number one science outlet on Earth, has become a complete propaganda shell factory over the last year. Atrocious writing. Anyway, let's go back to a great bit of writing from a very, very long time ago. This was the book that I made a video about eight years ago, and it spawned the awareness of what is now known on the internet as the Earth-facing solar quiet. The Maunders, for whom the Maunder Minimum is named, and who wrote this book, identified that the Earth seemed to kill sunspots. They'd decay when turning in to face Earth, and spawn more prevalently on their way out, like we saw this morning top right with the flares. This is not mainstream solar physics because after the Maunder period, it stopped happening. There was no Earth-facing solar quiet until November 2011. It roared back last sunspot cycle, and whether we called it the full Earth-facing solar quiet in the video titles, or we abbreviate it as EFSQ, we covered it in detail during the last sunspot maximum. So far this cycle, we've really only had two major solar upticks. The first one was Earth-directed and gave us that level 3 geomagnetic storm. But this recent one has missed us. The in-between activity mostly missed as well, but it was mostly minor. And with the magnetic terminator appearing to have kicked in, the sun should be ramping up here in the Earth-facing solar quiet, will really have to step up even more than last sunspot cycle as Earth's magnetic field continues to weaken. In this paper, they find the first evidence of the excursion cycle back 150 to 200,000 years and beyond. It is so difficult to track these magnetic excursion events when you go back past about 100,000 years. But they not only found it, they found the cycle. They say it's in the 10,000 year range and when you look back that far in time, 10,000, 9,000, 12,000, pretty much all looks the same. I honestly had thought it was possible the 12,000 year cycle was a feature of only the last 100,000 years. That's plainly wrong. This cycle has persisted a lot longer than we realized. At nearly 12,000 years since the last one, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.